Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Vishnu Sastanam video of this week. We are a bit late. <laughs> but many of you have asked me different questions pertaining to Vishnu Sastanam, which we would like to address today, which is also very important. Uh, and this is exactly how we should read the scriptural texts because if you just read it like a parrot or like a robot, you may know all the stuff, but there's something which goes on inside. Do you know the inside story? Like you'll see many people, they will read the Bhagavad Gita. I get people who tell me, Sir, I have read the Bhagavad Gita 10 times. I've read uh, Ramayana 20 times. I've read Mahabharat 20 times. I mean, not the whole big version, but some book they have some small book which summarizes the Mahabharata which they have read 20 times <clears throat> but then the question is why is there so much difference between what the Mahabharata or the Ramayana says you should be like and who you are why is there such a gulf of difference <laughs> this is because we are just reading it theoretically so there are two, two the, like first stages you read and then is you uh, contemplate, you think what's going on. And then what happens, you will get some questions. You may not get necessarily, but uh, most of you might get. Many people get, I used to have so many questions. And then what happens, you think, okay, why did I get this question? All right, mm -hmm. this is what I need to know, okay. So therefore, the questions which I get regarding the Vishnu Sastram, this question is very important that what is the underlying mood of the Vishnu Sastram? I mean, should we just uh, listen it like, okay, Bhishma Uvacha Jagat Prabhum Deva Devam Anantam Purushottam. Should we just listen it? Or we learn the meaning and we digest it and it's done. Right? Yes, he's talking of Krishna. But then... Uh, What's what's the big deal? <laughs> so you have to you have to understand there are so many things when you are talking of scriptures, okay, and especially when you are talking of Srimad Bhagavatam. And wh why do I say Srimad Bhagavatam? You may think, oh, this is about Vishnu Sasanam. Why am I talking of Bhagavatam? Because Vishma Vitama is one of the twelve Mahajans, as the Srimad Bhagavatam says. Seventh canto, Yamaraj says this. Sixth, sixth canto, sorry. Sixth canto, Yamaraj says this to the Yamadutas. Okay. That these twelve are the Mahajan. Swambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Kumaro, Kapilo, Manu, Prahlado, Janak, Bhishma. Bhishma is there in that. Okay. Balir, Vayasakhi, Vayam. Bali, Maharaj, then Vayasakhi is Sukhdev Goswami and Vaya means we, which means Yamaraj is including himself in that. So what is the underlying mood? It's like a password. Like uh, once my Shiksha Guru said that uh, everybody has Bhagavad Gita, you know. So everybody has a Bhagavad Gita these days. It's like a fashion. <laughs> People are uploading uh, photos, uh, you know, with Bhagavad Gita, you know, front cover, back cover, whatever. It's become a fashion these days. But there's a password, you know, and Gita has a very, uh, has the best password. <laughs> it is such a password which everybody can know uh, yet nobody can know and nobody can know yet they can know <laughs> this means the faith with uh, faith is the password f a i t h yes that's the word <laughs> what is that it is the mood of arjuna which is required okay you have to be like arjuna in, in, in fact it is said acharya is explained if you are in the mood of arjuna then what happens, um, you, you will actually hear as if Krishna is speaking it to your ears. You'll actually hear it. Okay. okay so, uh, so, for example, here uh, Arjuna is telling in the 6th chapter, 34th verse, Chanchalam himana Krishna pramati balabhadridham tasyaham nigraham manye vayo rivasudushkaram for the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna. And to subdue it, I think, is more difficult than controlling the wind. 
Then Lord Krishna responds in the 35th verse, Sri Bhagavan Vacha. I won't tell what's there, what he responds. <laughs> there are two ways Krishna says by which you can control the mind. So if you know, then please write it down in the comments. Let me see how many of you have read it. But the question is, <clears throat> when Krishna is speaking, there is there is like a underlying mood. Okay. So therefore, I talk of the Bhagavatam here. And when you are talking of Vishnu Sasanam, you have to understand it's in a particular setting. Like the war, the fratricidal war has ended and things have come to a standstill and it's disaster. Uh, Pandavas, the son, their sons have been brutally murdered by Ashwatthama. And uh, only Parikshit Maharaj remains, the last survivor of the entire... You know. Of course, uh, Arjuna's other sons are also there. Like uh, Iravan was killed, uh, Abhimanyu was killed. Uh, Babu Bahan remained. He did not take part in the war. <clears throat> and of course, uh, Barbaric was uh, also there. But the thing is, <clears throat> you have to understand, uh, you are talking of characters who are very prominently mentioned in the Bhagavatam. In Srimad Bhagavatam, if there are names of certain personalities, it won't come just like that. Okay. So therefore, when you are reading, you have to understand um, Yudhishthir Maharaj is asking some questions. So what is, who is Yudhishthir Maharaj basically? Now, if you read the Mahabharata, you will see, I mean, these are deeper understandings of the characters I am giving you. Then you will know why it is so great to read the Vishnu Sasana. And this is how you actually transform your life. So it's not just by reading. I'll tell you how. You have to understand who Yudhishthir is. You have to understand who the Pandavas are. Till the time you do not understand Yudhishthir and the Pandavas, you cannot understand the Vishnu Sastra. Till the time you do not understand Bhishma, you cannot understand the Vishnu Sastra. All things are just details. Those things which are there in the Vishnu Sastra is there in thousand other places. I mean, I'm not uh, saying it's not good or it's not nice or it's not important or it's not prominent. I'm not saying that. But Vishnu Sasanam is not special because it is Vishnu Sasanam, which means it has you know, thousand names of Vishnu or whatever. Or it has some very unique slokas which are <coughs> not there in any other part of this universe. It's not like this. If you read technically, there are many things which you will already know. But why is it so special? Because it is spoken by a very great personality. It's spoken by one of the 12 Mahajans. That is why it is that um, that takes it to another level. And who is hearing it? The Pandavas. Now you may be thinking, oh yeah, we know about the Pandavas. You know, yeah, they were nice people. Uh, so what? <laughs> No, that's what I'm telling you. You have to understand who are the Pandavas. Okay. Apart from all this, you have to understand who is Kunti Devi. If you do not understand uh, these people, then it's of not much use. Who are these personalities? You know, once Narad Muni and Yudhishthir Maharaj is having a conversation. So in that Narad Muni tells, um, Yudhishthir Maharaj tells to Narad Muni, Oh Narad Muni! You are so fortunate. You are so fortunate. You are so fortunate. You are the luckiest, luckiest, luckiest of all. Why? Because you are all the time um, chanting Narayan Narayan. You are the most luckiest person. You are always, your entire life is like an example for spiritual, uh, uh, for people who are uh, wanting to look up to as a uh, great personality. Of course, Narada is also one of the 12 Mahajans. Okay. And so is his father, Lord Brahma himself. And so is his uh, brother, Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva and Narad Muni, they are brothers. <laughs> I mean, uh, not literally, but the Rudra which, uh, which we have in this world, Lord Shiva as Rudra, that Rudra comes out from uh, Lord Brahma's body. So that is why they are considered brothers. Okay. So now, you are so great. You know, I mean, uh, when uh, it is said that... Uh, even the demons, the Rakshasas, Danavas, Daityas, whenever Narad Muni used to come to their court, they used to come and, you know, touch his feet. You know, even the Rakshasas, like, you know, Kamsa and Hiranyakashyapu. When Narad Muni used to come, they used to go and bow down. Can you believe it? 
they would not bow down in front of God, in front of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, but uh, they would go down and go down and bow in front of Narad Muni. Can you just believe it? That was his stature. I mean, that is <laughs> because he has a transcendental body; he never dies. But so Yudhishthira Maharaj says, "You, you are a perfected soul. You know, your body is completely spiritual. You are the best. There's nobody like you." In fact, Yudhishthira Maharaj says, we are fortunate to see you, to get your darshan. It's, it's with some rare, unimaginable good fortune that you get the association of somebody like Narada. It is impossible even for the devatas, it is not possible to get his darshan. Very rarely they get what to speak of other people. <laughs> So Yudhishthir Maharaj is um, considering himself very fortunate because he thinks that he has seen somebody who is so great, like Narad Muni. And now here's the interesting story. What does Narad Muni do in, in return? Narad Muni doesn't say, after all, you know, it's me. <laughs> yes, yes. Good, good. I know you're lucky, you know. Oh, yes. You're right. Sai Bola, Ekdam correct. <laughs> <laughs> Narad Muni doesn't say all this. Narad Muni says, Oh Yudhishthir, I may be lucky, but I consider that you are even more luckier than me. And Yudhishthir Maharaj is embarrassed to hear this. What? I am more luckier than Narad Muni. How is it possible? Narad Muni, my God, he is the guru of Prachni Varshad. He is the guru of Dhruva. He is the guru of you know, Chitraketu Maharaj. He is the guru of so many personalities. You know. How can I be luckier than Narad Muni? How is it possible? Okay. Then Narad Muni says that that same Krishna who I worship, who every, every personality in the world is, you know, worshipping, chanting his names, glorifying him as the devatas do. Yam, Brahma, Varunendra, Rudra, Marutas, Stunavanti, Divya, Istavai, Vedai, Samaga, Pashanti, Yam, Yogino, Jnana, Vastita, Dadgate, Namanasa, very beautiful sloka, it's there, you can read it. <laughs> the, all the devatas, they are just singing, Stunavanti Divya Istavai. But, then the, but that same Krishna, when he is in this material world, he is coming to the house of Yudhishthir Maharaj. He is coming and he is touching your feet as you are his you know, elder brother, brother in this line. Uh, as per family traditions, and he's sitting with you, he's eating with you, he's laughing with you, he's giggling with you, he's talking with you, he's discussing politics, he's discussing, you know, religion, he's discussing all the stuff of the world. You know, he's talking to your mother, he's talking to your wives, everything. That, that Krishna who all the entire universe, the yogis, they are, they are meditating as this, you know, dhyana vasthit tadgate namanasa, which means they are, they are meditating. Dhyana vasthit means they are fixed in meditation of the Paramatma form, the four-handed form. That, that form which they are aspiring to see once in their life, that person is behaving with you as if, uh, I mean, just like a normal person. How fortunate you are. You and the Pandavas, they are the most fortunate. And Narad Muni says, it is indeed my great fortune that today I have seen all of you. This is what Narad Muni says. So Yudhishthira and the Pandavas, including Draupadi and Kunti, they are very much embarrassed to hear this because one of the symptoms of a great personality is that they, they do not like to hear praise about themselves. And one of the symptoms of a degraded person is when they hear something good about themselves, they're like, bol, bol, all bol. <laughs> this is how they are. They may pretend, no, actually, you know, it was not me. It was he did it. Actually, she did it, you know. But then inside, the false ego is rejoicing. Oh, finally, the world understands. What a great personality. I am also one of the 13 Mahajans. <laughs> Why? There are 12 Mahajans and I am the 13th, right? So now the world knows what a great personality I am. So therefore, they were very much embarrassed because that's the symptom of their greatness that they, they, they felt that they are so inferior that uh, how can they be great, you know. So Narad Muni was telling, and that was also symptom of his greatness that he was giving the limelight to somebody else. 
imagine chakravarti yudhishthir is chakravarti which means he is is like the end of it all there is no ruler in the earth or even in the heavens compared to him he was he had done rajasuya yagya that ruler is coming and telling you that you are the most fortunate personality it's not some uh, petty prime minister or some petty president of this world who stays for 5 years 10 years and then disappears one day dies not like that is yudhishthir maharaj you know indra would come and uh, request him to come you know that that was uh, the stature of yudhishthir you know arjuna had gone in this body to the heavens and got the divyastras can you just believe it the stature of the pandavas now that personality is telling you that you are most fortunate and now you are giving it back to him that because krishna is behaving like an ordinary person with you so you are most fortunate how dear you are to krishna how much krishna loves you how much krishna likes you how much krishna is obsessed about you and especially arjuna arjuna was uh, like krishna you know like the air which comes in and goes out like you are breathing air and breathing out it was like like that both of them they were best of friends you know <laughs> that is why krishna says you know bhakto sime sakha cheti rahasyam hetad uttam krishna says because you are my friend and a good devotee that is why i am revealing all this so therefore you have to understand these personalities who are just who are sitting there they are not ordinary personalities they are exceptionally exceptional <laughs> they are extraordinarily ordinary, extraordinary i mean uh, it's like this there's no categorization you cannot just compare it's like so therefore you may think oh you know okay yudhishthir is asking uh, and then bhishma is answering okay after all they are talking of vishnu right so it's great of course that is uh, that's there but it's even greater because of these two personalities one is bhishma and another one is yudhishthir yeah. and all the pandavas of course we can keep discussing about them uh, but <laughs> due to the interest of time i have to stop the video all right so this is how you transform your life you read about these personalities you understand you understand the mood behind what is being said not that you just read and then ah, it's done okay it's not like this okay so thank you very much for your patience and if you like this video click the thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel and watch the other videos if you have not watched in this playlist or my bhagavad gita or the bhagavatam playlist and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him. all right